Hello, everyone. Welcome to class again. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if this is your first time, welcome. I'm glad you came today. All right, so it's time to get class started. If you've been here before, you know what we do at the beginning of class. So the first thing that we usually do in class is introductions introductions okay so i'm gonna ask you guys to tell me a couple of things about yourself all right and i'll post these things in the comments as well so that you guys can take a look all right so the first things that i would like you guys to tell me are one what is your name Okay, if you tell me your name, I can talk directly to you when you type things in, I can answer your questions. Number two, tell me what country you're from, okay? And the last thing that I would like, to, like you to tell me today is what is the last thing that you ate? What is the last thing that you ate? All right, so if you're here and you're watching, and I can see there are definitely people watching, please introduce yourself in the chat box. You can tell me your name, tell me what country you're from, and tell me what is the last thing that you ate. Okay, so while you guys do that, I'm gonna introduce myself, okay? My name is Patricia. A lot of you already know that and I'm from the United States. I was born in New York, but I actually live in Connecticut right now. And the last thing that I ate was, I had a smoothie. I had a smoothie. Now, I don't know if you guys know what a smoothie is. So if you don't know what a smoothie is, you can ask me in the chat box and I'll explain to you, okay? So, you guys can do the same thing. Tell me what your name is, what country you're from, and what's the last thing you ate. Now, from here, we're gonna go ahead and get class started. So while people are still coming to class, I know it takes people a little time to get to class and to get things set up. So while we wait for people to get to class, I'm gonna make a couple of quick announcements, okay? The first announcement is that this free class that we're having, is not the only free class that I do. I actually have lots of free classes that I teach, okay? So if you would like to know more about my free classes, what you need to do is go to my Facebook page. All of the information about my free classes, the days, the times, the places, they're all on my Facebook page. So if you'd like more information about those free classes, you can go to my Facebook page. I just put that in the chat box for you. And the other announcement that I wanna make is about my English club. Now, some of you might know about my English club. Some of you might not. The English club is something that I use to send study materials to students. And everything that I send to the students is free. I don't charge anything. So it's just an easy place for you to find all of the study materials that I have for English students. Now, if that's something that would be helpful for you, then you should definitely join my club. I'll send you all of my YouTube videos, all of my Facebook classes, my YouTube classes, and you'll even get other things that aren't on the Facebook page, things that aren't on my YouTube channel. So if you want more information about the club, then you can go to my website, okay? So my website, I'll also post in the chat box just so you guys have that information. And then the very last thing I wanna tell you guys about is I have small group classes and private classes that I teach all week long. In March and April, I have a lot of conversation skills classes starting. So for students who wanna improve their speaking skills and their listening skills and just work on their general conversation, this class is the perfect class for you, okay? So if you wanna learn more about my small group classes and my private, group, my private classes, I'll put that link in the chat box as well, all right? So now I think we should Go ahead and get started with the class. So if anybody's here, make sure you introduce yourself to me because if I don't know your name, 
I can't talk to you, okay? I can't give you corrections if you don't tell me your name. All right, guys, so let's get class started. And the first thing that we're gonna do today is a rhyming game, okay? A rhyming game. Now, if you don't know what rhyming is, I'll explain really quickly and then we'll get started. Rhyming is what a word that we use to describe two words that end with the same sound, okay? End with the same sound. For example, if I said a word, um, let's say I said green, okay? Like the color, green. There are lots of words in English that rhyme with green, like clean or mean or bean, okay? All of those words end with the same sound, een. And it doesn't matter if they're spelled the same way. All that matters is that they sound the same at the end of the word, okay? So, hello, who is that? Oh, Usair, how are you? I hope I said your name correctly. Welcome to class, I'm glad you're here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead with the rhyming game. So for today's rhyming game, the word that I want you to think about, I'll type it in and I'll also say it. The word that I want you to think about is to think place, place, okay? So the word is place. Now, I want you guys to think of any word that rhymes with place. So that means it has to end with that same sound, ace. What are some other words that rhyme with place? I'll give you guys a little bit of time so that you can type your answers in and then I'll let you know if you're correct or if you need some help. Ramundo, hello. How are you, Ramundo? Nice to see you today. Who else is there? Hesham, Hesham, welcome to class. And you had meat and rice. That's the last thing you ate. Sounds good. Let's see. Ah, very nice. So, okay, I'm gonna have to check the name. Usair. Usair has a suggestion. Space. Space and place rhyme. Very good, Usair. Okay, now the rest of you guys who just came in, Iris, <laughs> you're at work. That's okay, I won't tell anyone. All right, so we're working on rhyming. What is a word that rhymes with place? So far, Usair suggested space. Space rhymes with place. Now, we need some other words that rhyme with place. What are some words that rhyme with place? Okay, I'm gonna give you guys about 10 more seconds, and then we're gonna move on to the rest of class. But let's just try a little rhyming first because rhyming is good practice for your pronunciation. Rhyming can actually help you with your pronunciation. When you understand which words rhyme with each other, that helps a lot. All right, so words that rhyme with place. We have another suggestion, trace. Absolutely, trace rhymes with place. Very good. All right, I'll give you guys two more. Two more words that rhyme with, oh, trace, yes. So guess what, Hesham? Usair beat you, he put that word in already. Trace, yes, trace rhymes with place. Now it seems like you guys are still thinking. So before I give my answers, I'll see if anyone else has any other suggestions. Words that rhyme with place. Last few seconds. All right, guys, I have a couple for you. One that I thought of is face. Face rhymes with place, okay? And here's one more. Race, race rhymes with place. And yes, another one, grace. Grace rhymes with place, absolutely. Very good, guys. All right, so seems like everyone's ready to get started with class. So let's start with the interesting stuff. So if you've been to this class before, you know that the goal of this class is for you guys to describe the things that I show you, 
okay? So I'm gonna show you different things today and you guys are gonna practice making sentences. They can be simple sentences or they could be complex sentences. If you wanna get a little bit complicated with your sentence, that's okay, that's good practice. You're gonna use sentences to describe the things that I show you, all right? So the first thing that I'm gonna show you just have to get prepared a little bit. All right, so I have this in my hands. Okay, so I'm gonna do something and I want you guys to describe it, okay? Just watch. That's it, okay? We'll start nice and simple. Just type in one sentence to describe what I just did, okay? Type in one sentence to describe what I just did. And I'll show you one more time, okay? I started like this. So type in one sentence to describe what I just did. Now, when you type in your sentence, one thing that you definitely want to think about and pay attention to is the prepositions that you use, okay? Because things are moving, right? I'm asking you to describe something and there's movement involved. So prepositions are gonna be important. All right, so Uzair, let's see what you have. Pour the water to another glass. Yes, so what I did was I have a glass of water and I, Here's one thing you need to remember, Usair. What you described happened in the past. So really, you should use the past tense, okay? So I poured, poured with ed at the end, poured the water into another glass, into another glass. Why into? Because this glass has an inside, okay? So when you pour into something and there's an inside, then we say into. I poured the water into another glass. Good job, Usair. Okay, so we have another one. And let me see, I'm trying to remember your name. Hesham, okay, Hesham. You dribble the water from a paker to another. All right, so we're gonna talk about that sentence a little bit. So dribble is not the word that you want to use, okay? The word that I think you're thinking of is dribble. And I'll type it in for you. Dribble, okay? Spelled with B, not P. But dribble talks about, or dribble is a word that you use when the water is moving very, very slowly, okay? So I'll show you what dribble looks like. There is water, let's see if I can get it to dribble, dribbling from the bottle. So do you see how those little drops come out? So this water is dribbling, okay? But what I did before, that was pouring, okay? Pour is the most common word to use for that, all right? But that was a good job, I'm glad you tried. Now the other thing I wanna say is, what this is called, paker is not the right word. Now, I think you maybe typed that incorrectly. Maybe you meant beaker, maybe you meant beaker. Now, if, if I was in a lab, if I was a scientist, then yeah, I might call something like this a beaker. The only difference is a beaker usually has a little spout. It has a little place where you would pour the liquids from. So this, it's okay to call this a glass or a cup. That's fine, all right? So let's see, we have other comments here, okay. Oh, Gerardo or Gerardo, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but hello, welcome to class, Gerardo. The last thing you ate was a sandwich, awesome. And Arvind, hello, Arvind, I'm glad you're here. So can we say it's dripping of water from the glass? So good question, Arvind, and I think, okay, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, I think you're talking about this. So if you're talking about this, you can say, 
that water is dripping into the glass, okay? So the water is not coming from the glass. The water is coming from this, which is the bottle. So the water is dripping from the bottle into the glass. That's what this is. Now, if you're talking about this, Arvind, for that, you shouldn't use the word dripping because that's too fast to use the word dripping. For that, we want to use the word pouring, okay? So you guys did a good job with that one. If you have more questions, more sentences, go ahead and put them in. But we're also going to look at another liquid, and we'll talk about the vocabulary that we use to describe that liquid, okay? And let's see, Hesham, you reeked water from one paker into another. Reeked. Reeked is not the word that you want to use in English. Poured. I poured water from one glass into another one, okay? From one glass into another one, okay? Now, if you have more questions about that, just let me know. Now, I have something else here, okay? And I'm not going to make you guess what it is because that would be hard. <laughs> but I'll show it to you. This is the next liquid that we're going to talk about, all right? So before we talk about what I do with it, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's called syrup. Okay, this is called syrup. And syrup can be made from lots of different things. This one happens to be made from rice. But here's what I want you guys to tell me. This liquid is different from water. But the question is, how is this different from water? How would you describe this liquid. All right, so you guys can take one sentence and tell me how would you describe this syrup or how would you describe what I'm doing? All right, so let's get some sentences about this because this syrup doesn't act the same as water. It doesn't behave in the same way as water. So we don't use the same words to describe it. It depends. All right. So I'd like to know how you guys would describe this liquid. How is it different from water? Or you can describe what am I doing? All right, guys, let me see your sentences. Um, the <laughs> Good one. Okay, who? All right, I have to look back at the names again. It was not, not Hesham. Who was the other person? Oh, Usair, Usair. Okay, the syrup is slimy. The syrup is slimy. You know what? That's a good guess, but that is not the word that we would use to describe syrup, okay? So let me explain. Now, that is a good guess, but the word that we would use to describe syrup is not slimy. We would use the word sticky, sticky, okay? So slimy and sticky describe what something feels like when you touch it. Okay, it describes what something feels like when you touch it. And when something is slimy, it usually means that you're, it's a little bit wet and your fingers would slide right off of it. Your fingers slip and slide. That's usually what something slimy acts like. But this, if you touched it, it would stick to you. So that we call sticky not slimy, okay? So sticky would be a better word, but slimy is a good vocabulary word. I'm glad you brought that up. All right, we have more comments. Let me catch up. Arvind, I have just joined your live class on YouTube, so I am not aware of what you have been talking about. Okay, that's all right, Arvind. All you have to do is wait a few minutes, pay attention, and you'll get caught up, all right? So 
oh, we have someone new, but I'm not sure what the name is. It looks like He Thong Mua Ban. Maybe. I'm sure I said that incorrectly, but welcome to class. Thank you for coming. So, Hesham, is it honey? No, it is not honey. It's syrup, which is close to honey. They're similar, but not the same. Gerardo, serving. Was I serving? So serving is a word that we use when you're giving food to other people. A lot of times it's used for food. Now, I didn't give the syrup to anybody because there's, there's nobody else here in the room with me. And you guys, I can't give it to you. You're too far away. So serving is not the word that I would use to describe it. But good try, Gerardo. All right. So I think this is Hesham. It's viscosity. Viscosity. Wow, that's a fancy word. All right. Let's talk about that one because that actually is a good word to use to describe this. So I'll put two forms of the word. The first one is viscous. Viscous is an adjective. So when you look at a liquid like this, do you see how it moves slowly off the spoon? Not like water. Water would move quickly off the spoon. This moves slowly. That kind of liquid is called viscous, okay? Or you can say it's more viscous than water. Water is not very viscous, okay? Now, the other form of the word that uh, I think Hesham used was viscosity. Viscosity another fancy word, is a noun. So you can say the viscosity of syrup is, more is not the right word. Most people would say the viscosity of syrup is greater than the viscosity of water, okay? So the viscosity of syrup is greater than the viscosity of water. Some people might say the viscosity is higher. Some people might say the word higher. But you want to use the word like higher or greater because we're talking about measurements. And for this word viscosity, higher or greater is a more common word to use than more if you're talking about viscosity. Now, if you use viscous, then you can use the word more. Syrup is more viscous than water. All right? Very nice. Now, there's a simpler word that you can use instead of viscous. The word is thick, okay? Thick. So when a liquid like this falls slowly off the spoon, you can describe that liquid as thick. Aisha, hello, welcome to class. All right, you can come on in and see what we're working on today. So thick is another word that you can use to describe a liquid like syrup or honey. And if something is not thick, like water, thi oh, not quick, thick, okay? Now something like water that's not thick, we call thin. Okay? So you can use thick and thin to describe liquids. Now, most of you are probably used to using thick and thin to describe a person or maybe a book or something like that, but you can also describe it to use liquids. Okay? So if you guys have any questions about that, just let me know. But we're going to move on to, yes, exactly, thick. Yes, Hesham, very good. So we're talking about the consistency of the liquid. Very good. We're talking about consistency. Now, I'm going to help you with the spelling, okay? Consistency. I believe that's how you spell it, with an E, not an A. But consistency is how thick or how thin it is, how viscous it is. All right. So very nice. Good, good word. All right. Arvind, do you mean water is thinner than syrup? Yes, Arvind. Absolutely. Water is thicker than syrup. Okay. Or sorry, water is thinner, 
thinner than syrup. Syrup is thicker than water. Okay, so Arvind, you're absolutely correct. Water is thinner than syrup. All right, who else is here? Oh, Barkad, hello. Welcome to the group. All right, and let's see, am I missing any comments? Hopefully I'm not missing any comments. All right, so we talked about water and we've talked about syrup. Now we're gonna talk about something else, okay? So this, I'll let you guys guess what this is. What do you guys think this is? And I'll show you a little more closely. But if you saw it already, go ahead and take a guess at what you think this is. What do you think this is? I'll give you guys about five seconds and then you can, and then I'll tell you the answer. So Hesham, concentrated. That is another word that you can use to describe a liquid, but that doesn't describe what we're talking about, okay? So consistency and concentration are two different things, okay? So I'm glad you brought that up. What we're talking about, concentrated is not the word to use. Consistency, that's the word to use, all right? So good question. All right, Barkad, let's see what your question is. This is, oh, this is your first time to one of my classes. Awesome, I'm glad you came. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so this, Arvind has a guess that it's a powder. So it's it's kind of a powder. Uh, Hesham thinks it's flour. And let's see, um, Usair said salt or sugar. And someone else said, oh, uh, I can't read that last one. But somebody guessed it. This is salt. This is salt, okay? So now what we're going to talk about is words that we can use to describe how salt moves. So the way we use salt usually is we don't use a whole lot, right? You use a small, a small amount. So now I'm going to do something and I want you guys to try to describe what I'm doing. Okay? Watch. How would you describe that? Okay? Try to come up with a sentence to describe what I just did. Okay, type it in and I'll help you with corrections. So how can you describe what I just did? Just type in a sentence. It can be simple. It can be a complicated sentence if you wanna add details. But how would you describe what I just did? Yes, guys, it's salt, very good. I'll show you one more time. How would you describe this? Very, yes, okay, so. Arvind, I see your comment. Salt is granular and not powdery. Yes, you're right. That's why I said it's kind of like a powder. It's not exactly a powder. It's granular, which is, that's the more accurate word to use. You're correct, all right? Um, let's see, Aisha, it's powder. So yes, Arvind was just talking about that. It's close to a powder. Technically, a powder is something more like flour. flour is a powder, but salt, the pieces are a little bit bigger. So we actually call that granular instead of a powder, all right? But you don't have to worry about that. That's not a big deal. Now I see some descriptions coming in. Okay, so I rinsed the salt. Rinsed is, that's a good, it's a good try, but rinsed is not the right word to use. Rinse means that you put water on something. Okay, so unless you put water on something, you can't use the word rinse. Rinse means you put water on it and then you wash the water off. That's what rinse means. So sprinkling, usair, ooh, usair, you have salt is sprinkling, very close, okay? You've got the right vocabulary word. So the word that I wanted you guys to use is sprinkle, good job. Now the question is, who is sprinkling? Is the salt sprinkling? No, I am sprinkling, okay? So I 
am sprinkling salt into the bowl. I am sprinkling salt into the bowl. Aisha, yes, either salt or sugar is a good guess. This is actually salt today, all right? Gerardo, very nice. Patricia is sprinkling salt. Patricia is sprinkling salt. That's excellent. Good grammar. Javier, you're at work again. Welcome to class. And let's see, what else do we have? Salt, it looks it looks white, okay? So Barkad, what you wanna say is the salt looks white. The salt looks white or it looks white, okay? You don't have to say looks like white. When you talk about color, you can just say it looks green or it looks white or it is green, it is white. Those are the words that we use as native speakers. Okay, let's see, salt is so dry. Yes, salt is dry, <laughs> absolutely. All right, Arvind, salt can also be poured, can't we? So can salt be poured? Yes, salt can be poured, that's a good point. However, what I just did, this, most people would not call that pouring, okay? If you were pouring salt, the salt would be moving a lot faster, okay? If I took this bottle and I just opened it up and turned it over and filled the bowl, then I would say I poured salt into the bowl, okay? So yes, Arvind, you can use that word poured if the salt is moving that quickly. If it's that much salt that's moving, then you can use the word poured, okay? Um, strewed, that is also a good word, but that's not the word that we would use for this. Uh, most people would say sprinkled, okay? I sprinkled salt into the bowl. Now, if you want to do something, or if you want to use a simpler word, then a simple word to use that's always okay is I put salt into the bowl. You can always use the word put if you're not sure, okay? But strewn is not the word that we want to use, but that's a good try, Hesham, okay? Javier, the salt looks white. Absolutely, the salt looks white. The salt is white, actually. <laughs> so you could even make that sentence simpler. The salt is white. Aisha, you rinse the salt. Remember, rinse, that word rinse, you can only use that word if I add water to something. So when I'm done with this class, I'm gonna have to clean this and this and everything else that I used for class. Then I'll be washing and rinsing everything. So after class, when I'm done with everything, I'm gonna rinse the bowl, I'm gonna rinse the spoon, I'm gonna clean everything, but this, what I'm doing right now, that is not called rinse, okay? So it seems like that's a common idea that some students have, but that's actually not the word we use to describe it. Now, Hesham, it's a neutral material. Mm, I'm not sure what you mean by that, okay? If you have a question, you can put your question in and I'll help you out. Barkad, you're welcome, okay? I hope that helps you to understand a little bit better. Small size and moving faster. So if something is moving faster, it sounds like you're talking about the word pour. Yes, if something is moving faster, then you can use the word pour, okay? Now, I also wanna show you that there are other things that you can sprinkle, okay? Salt is a common one. You can sprinkle salt or pepper or sugar. Now, in my hand here, you might not be able to see very well, but I have some nuts. These are actually pistachio nuts. Now, I could sprinkle pistachio nuts into the bowl, okay? So if it's just a little bit, okay, a few small pieces, you can use the word sprinkle for something like that. You can even use the word sprinkle for something like water, okay? So I have a little water here, and I could use this bottle to sprinkle, sprinkle some water into the bowl. So you can sprinkle a liquid as well, all right? So I hope that helps you guys to understand that word sprinkle a little bit better. 
Now, believe it or not, um, I just want to check our time because I think our class is almost over, which is shocking. But we have about 10 minutes left. So here's what we're going to do. I have one more thing that I want to show you guys that you can describe. Yes. Oh, you like nuts. Very, very nice. Good. All right. So it isn't as, oh, isn't acidic or alkaline salt. Um, yes, you're right about that. Salt is neutral. It's not acidic and it's not basic. If you put salt in water, then it makes a neutral solution. So Hesham, yes, you're correct. Hesham, how, how do you know so much about science words in English? I'm curious about that. Most English students that I meet wouldn't know those science words in English, like acidic or alkaline. How did you learn those words? That's pretty interesting. All right, so you can tell me that, but for everybody else who's watching, I have these again. Okay, you guys remember these from two weeks ago? This is food coloring. I have red and I have blue. And I need you guys to make a decision because I need to use one of these colors and I'd like you to tell me which color you want me to use. So everybody gets to vote and just tell me if I should use red or blue. Okay, now you can only pick one. So don't put red and then after that put blue. You have to pick one color, either red or blue. Arvind, I see your comment. Let's see. We use water sprinklers to irrigate our wheat fields. Yes. So that machine that sprinkles water all over your farm or your garden is called a sprinkler. Yes. So you use a water sprinkler, okay? a water sprinkler to irrigate our wheat fields. Yes, so irrigate means bringing water to your garden or to your farm. Some of you guys might not know that word, but yeah, that's a great word to know. So, oh, people are voting. I see a lot of blue. I see blue, blue, and more blue. Does anybody want red? Oh, Aisha wants red. Come on, red, red's my favorite. Does anybody else want red? Sprinkle, what does that mean? Barkad, okay, so sprinkle one more time. I'll show you. I am sprinkling salt, sprinkle. Okay, so sprinkle is a word that we use when the thing, whether it's salt or water or nuts, whatever it is that we're dropping, it's not moving a lot, okay? It's not moving a lot. It's just a little bit. It's a small amount, and it's not moving that fast. That's when we use the word sprinkle, okay? So think of a sprinkler, right? A sprinkler sprays water all over the place, all over the place, but it's just little drops of water. It's not like buckets of water are being thrown all over the place. Small drops of water being spread all over the place, okay? That's how we use the word sprinkle. You can sprinkle salt. You can sprinkle nuts. You can sprinkle water, anything like that, okay? So I hope that helps you a little bit, Barkad. If you still have questions, let me know. Food coloring, let's see. There is a chips brand called Sprinkles. Oh, Javier, I know what you're talking about. It's not called Sprinkles. It's called Pringles, Pringles. I think that's what you're talking about. The potato chips that come in the can, it's like the long can and you open the top and they're stacked one on top of the other. That Those are Pringles, not Sprinkles, but you're close. All right, so let's see. It looks like, I want to say blue is the winner. So we're going to go with blue. Now, the thing that I'm, what I'm going to show you now is very different from everything else that we've looked at today. So you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit when you describe this. So first, I just want to show this to you guys. And let's see, hopefully you can see it well. So this glass 
has water in the bottom and it has oil on top. Okay. Water on the bottom and oil on top. I would prefer the blue one rather than the red. Okay. Yeah. It looks like blue one. Okay. So we're definitely going to do blue. Now, all I want you guys to do is watch what happens and then describe what you see. Okay. Describe what you see. So I'm going to take some food coloring. I'm going to drop it in. And then you guys tell me what you see. Keep watching. Describe what you see. Now this one might be a little bit tricky. How would you describe this? See, I'll move it a little closer. And I'll give you a little more coloring too. Describe what you see. All right, let me see what sentences we have here. All right, so dropping pieces by pieces. So I think I understand what you mean. Let's see what else we have. The oil floats on the surface of the water in the glass. Okay, absolutely. The oil floats on top of the water or on the surface of the water in the glass. Absolutely, Arvind, you're right. Um, let's see, Javier, the drops were able to through the oil, Javier, I think you forgot a word in that sentence, Javier, I want you to look at that sentence one more time and see if there's anything that you want to change. Okay. See if you want to make any changes and then I'll help you out. The drops were able to through the oil. See if you can fix that sentence. Let's see. Two fluids aren't mixed. That's right. So the two fluids or the two liquids don't mix. They don't mix. Very good. Now, let's see. Usair, the blue color is dropping at the bottom drop wise. Okay. Let's talk about that sentence because you've got a lot of description in there. You really tried to describe what was happening. So the blue color is dropping to the bottom to the bottom, okay? So the blue color is dropping to the bottom. And what I would say is one drop at a time, instead of saying drop wise. Drop wise is, is not a common word that we use in English. We would usually say one drop at a time or drop by drop. Some people might say drop by drop, but most people would say one drop at a time. The blue color is dropping to the bottom one drop at a time. All right, let's see what else. There's a glass of oil. Then you put some colors in the glass. Exactly. Okay. So there's a glass of oil and water. Okay. Uh, Sahir. Remember, there's water in that, in that glass too. So there's a glass of oil and water. And then I put some color, one color. So no S at the end. I put some color in the glass. Or you can say I put some coloring in the glass. All right. Aisha, let's see what you have. You put water and oil together, but they aren't dissolved. Okay. So Aisha, the word dissolved is used when you usually put something solid like salt into water or sugar into water or anything like that, anything that's a powder or granular, even flour into water. You could use dissolved to describe that. But when you put two liquids together, we usually use the word mixed instead of dissolved, okay? So what you can say, Aisha, is you put water and oil together, but they aren't mixed or but they don't mix, okay?
So mix is the best word to use there. All right, Hesham, the oil doesn't mix with water. The oil doesn't mix with water, okay? Oil is one thing, so you wanna use the word doesn't. All right, let's see, one liquid has one rate phase. Mm, I don't, I'm not sure what your question is, okay? If you can explain, that would be great. Javier, to get through, yes. All right, so let me look at the rest of your sentence now, Javier. The drops were able to get through the oil. Absolutely, that's much better. The drops were able to get through the oil and to the water, okay? So very good description. And let's see, Barkad, you put it oil with water and not mixed well. All right, Barkad, let's talk about that sentence. I put, or you said, you put oil, okay? You put oil. If you use the word oil, you don't need the word it. And if you use the word it, you don't need the word oil. You have to pick one or the other. So you put oil with water and it doesn't mix well. It doesn't mix well, or they don't mix well. Okay, so that's how you can say that. You put oil with water and they don't mix well. Okay, they actually don't mix at all. <laughs> so you can just say they don't mix. All right, so guys, that was great. You guys made some very interesting sentences. I hope you found it helpful to write these sentences and then talk about the grammar and how to make your sentences better. We talked about some new vocabulary like sprinkle. And we talked about what the difference is between sprinkle and pour, things like that. So I really hope you guys found this class helpful. I'm going to ask you guys to do me one favor. If you found this class helpful, if you like having free English classes, please give this video a thumbs up. That is so helpful for other students who want to find classes just like this. So please, before you go today, Give this class a thumbs up if it was helpful, if you learned a new word, if you like having free classes, please give it a thumbs up. So before we go, I'm gonna make a couple of announcements because I know there might be some people here that missed the announcements at the beginning of class. All right, I see you, Hesham. The oil on the surface of the water can be, can be fired. What do you mean by that? You mean can be set on fire. I bet that's what you mean. The oil on the surface of the water can be set on fire, okay? Arvind, sounds like you understand now, okay? But if you still have questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat box. All right, guys, it's almost the end of class. Quick reminders, we have lots of free classes. If you're interested in more free classes, I'm gonna give you guys the information so that you can find them easily. For my free classes, the easiest thing to do is to like my Facebook page. If you like my Facebook page, then you'll get a message from Facebook anytime I post a new class. So you can go ahead and like my Facebook page and you will always get messages when I have new classes. The other thing I wanna share with you is that I have an English club. So if you want more help learning English, if you want more materials to study, YouTube videos, free classes, Facebook lessons, articles to read. I'm even starting a podcast soon. If you want access to all of those things in one place, you should definitely join my English club. I just posted that in the chat box. And the last thing I wanna remind you guys is that I also teach small group and private classes. And I know some students are looking for that. So if you're interested in a small group class or a private class, then you can go to my website and get some more information about that, okay? Remember, I have some small group classes starting soon and they're conversation skills classes. So if you wanna work on your speaking and listening skills, that's the perfect class for you. You can find all the information on my website. It's on the link that I just put in the chat box. All right, guys? So if there are any last questions or comments that you wanna make, you can go ahead and make those comments now. Even after the video ends, after the class is done, I can still see the chat box. So you can still put comments into the chat box if you want to. Now, let me see, um, Arvind, Oh, my phone is ringing off the hook today. All right, Arvind, I'll follow you wherever you go. <laughs> Arvind, 
That's very sweet. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming to class. I see you in these classes all the time. That's awesome. And Aisha, as a pronoun. Oh, so Aisha, you're talking about it and oil. I think that's what you're talking about, Aisha. So yes, in that sentence, I, I don't remember whose sentence it was, but you can use it as a pronoun instead of using the word oil. Or you can use the word oil and then you don't need a pronoun. So yes, you're right. It is a pronoun. If you use oil, you don't need it. Exactly, Aisha. You know what you're talking about. Good job. All right, guys. That's it for today. I really want to thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it so much. Please, before you go, give this video a like. That really helps other students to find these classes. All right? Take me, take me your calendar. I don't understand that question. But if you have more questions, like I said, even after the class ends, I'll still be checking the chat box. So you guys can still put comments and questions in the chat box, and I'll check for those. All right? I want to thank you guys again. Usair, you're welcome. Thank you so much for coming to class. Aisha, I'm so glad you found this helpful. Arvind, you're welcome. And I hope to see you again soon. I know I'll see you again soon, Arvind. You're always in class. And Aisha, thank you again for coming. All right, everyone, have a great day or a great night. I'll see you guys soon.